Welcome to Stanley Creates. My name is Lauren Linehan, and today I'm here to show you how to make some monoprints. Monoprints are a form of printmaking where you can only get your image once. Uh, the outcomes are always a little bit spontaneous. You never totally know what you're going to get. Um, but the beauty of monoprint is that you can create a complete image with just your print alone, or you can use what you print to add to it, to add layers of collage, of paint, of drawing, anything you want. Monoprinting can be a great starting point for any project, especially if you find yourself not knowing where to, where to begin. Um, so today I'm going to show you a few simple monoprinting techniques that you can use at home. And um, let's get started. So right now I have all of my supplies. I have some oil pastels right here. I have some regular good old crayons. I have my watered down acrylic paint and I water it down because acrylic paint tends to dry super fast and so you just want to dry, uh, lower the drying time a little bit. I also have my purple temper paint. You can use any color of temper paint. I am just using purple. There is my purple temper paint. And if you have it at home, I'm using some good old speedball print, uh, block printing ink, and I have a brayer here as well. So what I'm going to get started with, ooh, and I also have um, several brushes, a tool to press into, and I'll show you what I mean about that in a second. But then I also have my, my paper that I'm going to print on, my good old you know, just regular copy paper out of the printer. And then I have my wax paper that I'm going to be using to do the mono printing. And then I have my dull pencil that I'm going to use to draw into my prints. And I will show you what that means in just a second. So I'm going to begin, ooh, I should mention that if you have a table that isn't dedicated to art, like this one here, obviously you can see it's a little messy. Make sure that you have a garbage bag down or some newspapers just to protect your surface. That's just, you know, being nice and clean. And so I'm going to take my wax paper. You'll notice that there are two different sides to the wax paper. There's one that's a little bit shinier and then one that's a little bit duller. We want to make sure that we're working on the shiny part rather than the dull part. And what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with my acrylic uh, not acrylic, but my um, oil pastel crayons here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some simple coloring. I'm just going to use some blue here. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing down quite a bit. I don't want there to be any space in between my marks. I want to make sure that it's nice and dark. We call that opaque. We don't want to see light through it. You shouldn't see your table through it. I'm going to do, I'm going to switch over to red. And then I'm going to do some other colors. I don't have a yellow with me, but I wish I had, but you can mix the colors with the oil pastels. If you're not used to using oil pastels, they do mix and sometimes they get a little muddy, but that's okay. That's what you're going for. I'm going to try to keep my colors a little bit separated. Ooh, I got light blue. And then I'm just going to do a few more marks. I think I'll throw some green in there. Maybe I'll throw it down here. You might have to hold on to your wax paper as you're coloring. It tends to want to go places. <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be a really simple, you can mark out your paper, you can do um, a square with Sharpie, like if you wanted to just draw a square around where you want your oil pastel to be, that is totally fine, that is up to you. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take one of my pieces of printing paper. You can do this several ways. You can lay your paper on top and then work through the back of the paper, or you can lay your paper on the table and then place your pastel face down onto the paper. I'm going to do it this way. I'll do both ways just so you can see, but I'm going to put my pastel 
over my paper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dull pencil and I'm just gonna draw into it. And so I think you wanna use a bit of pressure. That's why a dull pencil is important because if it was super sharp, it would just <laughs> rip through the, the, the wax paper. So you wanna make sure that your pencil's dull. Um, you can use other forms of drawing tools. So if you wanted to use the back end of your pencil, maybe the, the eraser, this one doesn't have an eraser. You can also use um, the back of a paintbrush. You can use thicker things too if you want to. Maybe I'll try to get some dots in here. I'll use different ones here. So I'm just doing some leaves because I am in love with nature. <laughs> and so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I got. So where I drew should be where the image is on the white paper. So I'm going to pull it back. And as you can see, it's there. I might get a little bit closer just so you can see just a little bit better. But there you go. Um, you can see the different colors and how they, they work out together. It's kind of nice and abstract. Maybe this is a tiny little cloud up there. Who knows? Or maybe a bug. It could be anything. Um, but that's using oil pastel. I'm going to use the same wax paper, the same piece of my, my oil pastel wax paper. And then what I'm going to do is you can take, um, like I have a book binding all here or I have, you can, if you don't have one of these at home, that's totally fine. You can also use a piece of cardboard that you kind of bend so it has more, more power to it. So I'm just gonna use that. I'm gonna hold my paper down and then I'm gonna see what happens. I'm just gonna try to transfer as much of this color to the paper as possible. And if you wanna test it, all you have to do is hold your hand here and then peel up the corner just to see how things are going. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna call that one good. I don't know if you can see it, but you can still see the image that I drew. And so if you come, come across one that you don't totally like or you don't appreciate it, don't worry about that. You know, you can always take I'm just going to take my my water down acrylic quick just to show you. You can oh well, you can always take another tool or another medium and then do layers on top of it. So if you want more layers, if you want it to show up a little bit more, you can do that. So it's all about kind of going with what you what you discover and what you play with. Mono printing is really about playing and just seeing what you can come up with. You can also take other colors that weren't in here highlight spots. I'm just kind of doing random marks. You bet me might be a little bit more intentional than I am. Um, but those are two examples of how to do mono printing. You can also, like I said, you can layer on top of the acrylic with like water, not watercolor, but with acrylic paint. If you use watercolor paint, the watercolor will pull away from the oil pastel because of science. Oil and water don't get along to, with each other. So there are, that's the example of the oil pastel. And then I'm going to switch over to the, um, the crayons, just your good old crayons that you might have at home. So these ones, this is a little bit trickier to do. Um, all you need to do is just make sure that you really cover the paper and you really, um, make sure that it's like saturated with with the color so what you want to do is like kind of color as you can see the the crayons aren't as as vivid or as bright as the oil pastel but what is important is that we keep going over and over to get a nice darker color you can still see some white through there but that's something that we're going to work with with the crayons. And so I'm going to switch to another color. Got some green. I think I chose the wrong colors for the camera. You might not be able to see the green very well, but I'm going to switch it on over to purple. And 
And if one color doesn't work out, then try other colors. You never totally know what you're going to get until you try. That's why it's so important just to take risks and try new things. So I'm going to do... I don't have any particular <laughs> rhyme or reason for this color combination, but I'm going to go ahead and blow off the excess little pieces of crayon that are on there. And then I'm going to take another piece of paper and I think I'm going to do it the same way I did. I'm going to put my paper down and then lay the crayon on the wax paper face down onto my piece of paper. I'm going to do the same technique that I did, and so oh, I'm going to do flowers again, or flowers, or leaves, or whatever. Maybe I'll do a flower up here. I am pushing pretty hard this time, just because I know that the, the crayons are a little bit harder to pick up on the white paper, but we'll see what we get. Let me test it. Let me just pull it up a little bit to see what's going on there. It's definitely lighter. I don't know if you can see. I will pull it up closer. It's definitely lighter, but this could be a great, great way to start a new drawing. So say you wanted just a little bit of extra color in your drawing, and then you can go in and kind of add more detail however you want to do it. You can do more flowers and pencil, or you can use other materials as well. You can go back to the crayons, or you could even, you know, if you have them, dive back into the oil pastels as well. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the oil pastels, and I'm going to try to see how much of this crayon I can get off onto the paper. So I'm going to use my cardboard again, and I'm going to really apply pressure. You got to use your muscles. The, the wax paper kind of wants to move on you a little bit. Just make sure that you're holding it down. Let's see what happened. Not a lot came out, as you can see, but that's not, that's not to be upset about, because all you need to do is just go in and add more layers of color add more crayon. So let me see if I can go ahead and do that again. Just add some more. And let's see if we can get these colors to come out a little bit better. I'm just going to do those two colors. And then let's see what happens. I'm going to put it down here in between so we can have a nice clean space. So I'm going to use my cardboard again. If your cardboard starts to look a little rough, just cut a new piece. I'm really pushing hard on this. I'm bending my cardboard just a little bit. Not a lot came out still. So this is, <laughs> this would be a vote for the oil pastel over crayon. But if you have crayon, you can still get some really great details and like very delicate drawings if you'd like to. Let's move on to our, la -dee -da, let's do our watered down acrylic paint. Okay, so like I said earlier, I watered this down because acrylic paint tends to dry pretty quickly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of my wax paper in half. And then I'm going to take shiny side up. So you might have to look at it a little bit. You can kind of feel it too, so that's the shiny side for me. And then what I'm going to do with this is you can go ahead and like paint this on however you want. I'm just going to stick with my, my, um, my leaves and my flowers. You can paint this on however you want. I'm gonna do a little bit more paint there. Um, and Or you can take it, I'll show you with this leaf here. You can take your paint and cover 
your wax paper. And then with the other side of your paintbrush, you can take it and draw into it to get some interesting details. So let's see how we do with that. So I can already kind of feel that this is kind of drying. So I'm going to go over it just one more time. You can tell when it's drying when it starts to get less shiny. Once it's less shiny, that means it's about dry. So I'm going to take another piece of paper and I'm going to move quickly with this one. And then I'm going to place it. I think I did a bigger one. So I'm going to place it down and then I'm going to use my hands to press my paper into the plate. And you can kind of see it coming through the paper now. So I'm going to really apply pressure. Got to work those fingertips. And then let's see how it turned out. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So this flower here, or this, um, why do I keep calling them flowers? This leaf here dry just a little bit in the center, but you, it still looks pretty cool. See, that's what I mean with monoprint. Like you just kind of go with the flow of it and usually it turns out pretty, pretty miraculously. So there's that for the acrylic paint. And like I said, it dries pretty quickly. So if I were to do another print of this, it wouldn't print. This is already dry. Um, so maybe you could even water it down a little bit more however you want to do it. But I'm going to move over to the tempera paint and we're just going to see what happens there. So I'm going to grab my other piece of wax paper. I'm going to feel out which side is this, the shiny side and which is not. And then I'm going to take my tempera paint and tempera paint is typically a little bit more liquid than acrylic paint. So I'm going to go ahead and use a nice little like spongy guy that I got here, spongy brush. And I'm going to take that and really lay it on there. <laughs> I'm going to do quite a bit here. And you can kind of see that the, the tempera and the wax paper don't really like each other. So you get them kind of separating. You get little like pockets that are kind of pulling away. But that adds really interesting texture to your print. And so you, that's something you can definitely play with. So I'm just going to do a nice dark layer here. I'm going to go over it a few times here. And instead, let's see, I'll draw, draw into here just to see what I can get. So I'm going to use my dull pencil, do some more leaves here. Cool. Got my leaves. I'm going to grab a new piece of paper and let's see what we get here. Use my hands again to press into the print. I want to make sure that I hit every part with my fingertips and kind of press into it. You can check it if you hold your paper down here and kind of peel the print off. Maybe a little bit too much tempered paint, but let's try a different technique, okay? Let's do the same thing. Let's cover it completely. Let's go ahead and cover. Here we go. And then I'm going to try to get it as even as possible. And then what I'm going to do this time is instead of drawing into it straight on the wax paper, I'm going to take my paper and lightly drop it down onto my wax paper and my paint. I'm not going to touch it in the center because anywhere you put pressure on top of the paint is where the ink or the paint is going to go. So you can kind of see it kind of going through the paper already. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dull pencil and draw into the back and see where we go from here. See what happens. My leaves are getting a little bit more abstract. <laughs> I'm going to pull that off. Definitely too much paint. <laughs> 
what I'm going to do again is I'm going to try this one more time. We're going to make sure that we don't have too much acrylic or too much temper paint on here. So we have too much, then it's going to bleed and kind of smush out like the last one. So I don't, I think that's a pretty good even layer. There's not a lot on there. I might let it sit for like just a second here before I put anything on. And then now, making sure that this is nice and flat, let's try this again. I'm going to put another piece of paper on top, just very lightly put it on there. I'm not gonna touch it. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pencil and then draw into the back of it. I like this method because you can see what you're drawing because <laughs> you're using a pencil. So it's, it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So this one worked out really nicely. You got a like, you got a lot, a lot oh, <laughs> you got a lot of really nice texture in the background, but you can also see your image where you drew into. And so the key with using tempera paint is making sure that you don't use too much of it, because if you use too much of it on one piece of wax paper, your print is going to turn out like this, right? So this is not very much tempera paint, just really to cover the wax paper with a very thin layer. This is too much tempera paint that I put on and you just wanna avoid this, unless this is a good look that you're going for, because then you could use this, you can cut it up and turn it into other things if you'd like to, or you can collage it into other pieces of artwork. And then now I'm going to show you my last little bit here. Let me clean up my space. I'm going to use this. Ooh, make sure you're watching where your stuff is going because <laughs> I almost just made a mess. Um, I'm going to use block printing ink and you might not have block printing ink at home, which is totally fine. I just want to show you what is possible. Um, so I'm going to use my nice clean side. I'm going to take my, my printmaking brayer here if you don't have one of these and you have block printing ink at home, you can use um, you can use paint brushes to take the block printing ink and put it onto your wax paper. But I'm just going to use a brayer. These things are really nice because you can really spread the ink. So I'm going to ooh, my ink is a little bit hard. So I'm going to load up my brayer. Hopefully, I don't get too much ink. maybe a little bit too much ink <laughs> but let's just see okay yep a little bit too much ink but it might actually work here so I'm going to just roll it on there if you don't have a roller you can use a paintbrush maybe I'll show you that as well oops sorry for my I got in the way there Maybe a little bit more ink. You wanna make sure it's nice and even, unless you're not going for an even look. It is all dependent on what you want. The wax paper sometimes has a mind of its own. So I'm gonna stop there. It's not super, you can still see a little bit through it. You can still kind of, you can see my hand through it. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, I'm actually going to take my pencil and I'm going to draw into it here. So let's see what the difference is between this and the acrylic and the tempera. Block printing ink is a little bit stickier and I feel like it does a better job of holding a pattern. So let's see, I'm gonna put it down and I'm gonna use my hands again. I'm just gonna press into it and make sure I get all of the different Okay, I think I'm gonna pull it up now. And let's see what we got. Ooh. 
So it worked out pretty well, right? The line is really crisp, it looks nice, and the the ink behind in the background kind of looks nice and just kind of fun. Like there's a lot of wispiness to it, a lot of depth to it. And so I'm gonna do that again. I'm just gonna just gonna put some more ink on my brayer and put it on my wax paper. I'm just gonna do just a simple just like that. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of paper and instead of drawing into the wax paper, I'm going to lay my paper down, not touching it. And then I'm going to take my, my pencil here and press into it and do some more. leaves. <laughs> They're getting weirder and weirder, but I love that. Self-expression is what it's all about. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll put a flower up here just in case. Ooh. She's got a lot of expression. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pull it away. And it looks pretty cool. You know, this one and the tempera paint one look very similar. In outcome so here's the tempera paint and then here's the block printing ink just a cool side by side and so I'm going to show you all of the examples real quick of what we've gone through so starting with the latest one we have our block printing ink here works out pretty nicely it's a bit thicker and stickier than the other paints it works pretty well but if you don't have that don't worry you can always use tempera paint but remember don't use too much tempera paint on your plate because you'll get this unless this is something that you want but use when you use a little bit of tempera paint then you get nice detail and you get to see your drawing a little bit better the acrylic paint remember what we said it dries pretty quickly but if you water it down just a little bit and you apply and work quickly with it, then you can get some pretty cool designs and results. And then we have our oil pastels here. So this was me drawing into the back of the paper. It looks pretty interesting, all the different colors. This was, this one's mine that I kind of altered a bit. Um, this is the oil pastel as well. And then we have our crayon where it really works best to get nice lines and detail rather than solid color. So there are a few ways that you can monoprint right at home. And I think it's a great way to get started on a project. Say I want to do some flowers, but I don't know where to start. This could be a great way to start a, a picture with flowers and like then I can start drawing on it. I can start painting on top of it I can just layer and layer and layer things on top to make it completely unique But this could also be its own piece on its own So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed I hope that you enjoyed Working with me today on mono prints and I hope that you get to, to get to try these out at home um once again, this is Stanley Creates. My name is Lauren Lenahan, and I thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Hey.